praise God. God is love and has demonstrated that love in everything that he does. Paul compares faith, hope, and love and, ex and conclude that the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. All right. So we are still dealing with the topic of love. And again, for most of us, uh, all who uh, participated in the general conference, whether in person or online, uh, just such powerful messages reminding the church of what is important. And so I am encouraged uh, by the confirmation of uh, what the Lord wants the church to hear, particularly at this time. Uh, so we're continuing with this topic of love. It is, uh, it is the fruit of the Spirit. It is what we ought to bear in our lives. We have spent several months covering the various aspects or facets of that fruit, uh, but together uh, it all comprises uh, what we call love. Obviously, again, it's called the fruit of the Spirit, which means it's generated by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Therefore, it is God who generates this love or the ability to love. Uh, the last lesson we covered uh, from the Greek perspective, uh, the, 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 how they dissected, they dissected love. And so there, there, there is a type of love that can be generated uh, by humans uh, from our flesh, uh, the, the eros or erotic love, which is more translated lust, the storge love, the family love, and then the uh, filial love, which is a more brotherly or neighborly love. We can generate that from our human uh, capacity. However, when you talk about the agape, the love of God, uh, it, it, is, it is generated uh, by God himself. And God is love. God does not have love. He is love. And the way he demonstrated that love, all right, we, we're going to cover how he demonstrated that love. Uh, but in the totality of all his actions, from the very beginning, uh, remember that mankind was, uh, as it were, the, 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 the pinnacle of God's creation, the climax of God's creation, the last in that sequence. And yet everything uh, uh, prior to man was made for man. So God provided everything that man would need for his sustenance and growth before he created that. That is where he created man. That is a demonstration of love that the the trees, the water, the garden, the, the, the fish, the bird, the, the sun, uh, vegetation, everything that man would need to thrive and to survive was made for him even before he came into existence. That's God's love. We also see demonstrated when uh, man sinned and obviously God uh, provided a means to protect him. And so Paul compares faith, hope, and love and concludes that the greatest of these is love. Uh, we are living in a time where uh, faith and hope and, 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 and these two particular items have become prominent in preaching and teaching. Believe God for this. Believe God for that. Uh, you know, faith, faith, hope. And, and, and of course, grace has also become a prominent feature in our, in our, in, 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 in our modern messages. Uh, but we, we, we cannot and should not underestimate or undermine the power of love. This is the pinnacle of God's creation. If we are going to uh, 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 be an example of godliness, if we're going to truly imitate God, which is our purpose, right? We are created in the image of God. If we are truly going to imitate him, in other words, you can operate in faith, you can operate in hope, and still not imitate God. We only become proper and true imitations of God, our Creator, when we are operating in love. Next slide, please. God is love, agape, the love theme of the Bible, can only be defined by the nature of God. 
John affirms that God is love. First John 4, 8. God does not love. He is love. Everything does flows from his love. Everything that God does flows from his love. So I, I want to encourage someone tonight, right? When, when, when we think about God, um, many times, again, the, 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 the enemy in our flesh likes, remember, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He is a, a deceiver, a slanderer. Uh, uh, and so he's our adversary, right? And so uh, a spirit of condemnation and fear uh, comes upon an individual when they sin, when they make a mistake, right? When Adam and Eve sinned out of fear, they hid themselves, right? Uh, and so God had to reintroduce himself to them, uh, you know, by presenting himself as a God of love, that in spite of your mistake, I still love you. So uh, when we think about God, it is not as if love is uh, uh, something that God can activate and deactivate. There, there is no deactivation switch in God when it comes to love. It is the essence of his nature. It's like the sun. The sun must shine. If, if, if it no longer shines, it is no longer the sun. It, it, it changes uh, the nature of, of, of what it is. Uh, 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 a river or a fountain uh, must flow. Uh, there are just certain things that are uh, 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 basic to, to an essential to, to something, if it, a working automobile is expected to drive, right? So God has to love. It is not a, it's not a matter really as if God has a choice. You know, when you have a choice, then that is not your basic nature, right? But love is who he is. So he cannot but love. So for the sinner, for the backslider, for the weak, for those who are struggling, it is important to understand this nature of God, that it, that, that it is not as if, you know, we have to do anything to get God to love, right? He is a loving God, just as how when we wake up in the morning, we expect the sun to shine, right? Whenever, we, whenever it comes to God, he cannot but love, regardless of your condition, your situation, your circumstance, uh, it really has nothing to do with you. It is who he is regardless of anything else. So everything that God does flows from his essential nature. It is from a nature of love. Next slide, please. John em emphasizes repeatedly that God the Father loves the Son. John 5, 20, 17, 23 to 26. And that the Son loves the Father. John 14, 31. Because the Father loves the Son, he made his will known to him. Jesus, in turn, demonstrated his love to the Father through his submission and obedience. All right, so this is very important to look at when it comes to love, right? It says, because the Father loves the Son. Now, we know that the Father is the Spirit, right? The Son is the flesh. God was both, I mean, Jesus was both uh, human and divine. He was the Father as far as the spiritual nature was concerned, and yet he was the son as far as his fleshly nature was concerned. He was divinity robed in humanity. Uh, and so the father loves the son, and the way how this love was demonstrated was through transparency, through transparency. Remember that Adam and Eve uh, uh, the Bible says that when they sinned, they covered themselves because they realized that they were naked. Uh, we know that uh, the, the, the highest level of intimacy between two humans, right, involves nakedness or transparency, right? Nothing hidden, right? So the way how love is demonstrated from the Father to the Son is first and foremost transparency we as individuals in understanding love if we're going to operate in the love of god then there has to be a level of transparency 
uh, between us and God and even between us and each other. Obviously, we can't trust everybody, so we can't be transparent with everybody. Uh, but there needs to be a level of transparency in order for true love to 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 to, to manifest. Right? Uh, uh, the Bible speaks about uh, our sins. Right? When you talk about our sins, uh, we've covered the, the the process of a worshiper. Uh, in the Old Testament, he would bring his lamb. The lamb had to be inspected or whatever sacrifice it was. It had to be without blemish. All right. But uh, 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 very important was the fact that this worshiper, by laying his hand upon this sacrifice, he would pray a prayer and he was expected, expected to confess Right? That word confess is an act of transparency. To confess is to reveal, to expose yourself. See, right? When we come and we say, Lord, I have sinned. Lord, I have this. It is, it is becoming transparent before God. The Bible says if you cover your sins, right, you will not prosper. See, so God expects us to 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 come to him with a certain amount of transparency he made himself transparent to his son jesus christ he revealed himself jesus could uh when they when they when, when they question how jesus could do the miracles he says whatever i see my father do so god the father the spirit made uh gave access to himself to his son jesus christ who through his human spirit could now interact and 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 and, and visualize what this the, the holy spirit within him was doing and that's how uh the spirit the soul the mind the body work together where jesus could say i and the father are one see so god wants to reveal himself to us but we have to reveal ourselves to god we cannot come to god in hypocrisy we cannot come to god in pretense and expect to to, to experience the true love of god right if we confess our sins the bible says he's faithful and just to forgive it is in the the the, the confession in the making ourselves transparent right that true love is demonstrated and then the the second part is jesus in return right demonstrated his love through submission and obedience right so god makes his will known that's him being transparent towards us and then we now in submission to him we reciprocate that love there will be no true intimate love without Submission, again, using a, a, a human analogy, right? The highest of the human uh, 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 intimacy, right? There is a uh, an act of submission between both parties. There's, there, there's, there's openness, there's transparency, there's nakedness and submission in order for true love to be demonstrated, right? As Christians, we've got to get this right because there are many folks today who uh, uh, in our walk with God, we are still not willing, we are still hesitant when it comes to being transparent and being submissive and obedient. And that's why the love of God cannot flow as it ought to in our lives, right? Again, in order for God uh, love to be demonstrated, he made his will known, he became transparent, and Jesus in return submitted to that revelation of God's will. And as Christians, we have to get to that place, right? Quoting scriptures, speaking in tongues, running up and down the aisle, all that stuff doesn't matter if we are not going to practice true submission and true obedience and transparency when it comes to our relationship with God. And again, to a certain extent in our relationship with each other. Next slide, please. The theme of the entire Bible is the self-revelation of the God of love. In the Garden of Eden, God commanded that you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Genesis 2, verse 17. God looks for Adam after his sin, calling out, where are you? God seeks Adam not to put him to death, 
but to re-establish a relationship with him. God, the lover, will not allow sin to stand between him and his creature. He personally bridges the gap. Praise God. So the Bible is an entire uh, collection of books. Your Bible is a library, 66 books, right? But throughout the 66 books of the Bible, it is, it is a self-disclosure. Gradually, God unveils himself until we see the truest image of God in the person of Jesus Christ, right? So it's a gradual revelation, God becoming transparent, revealing himself, unclothing himself as it were, exposing himself to mankind, the creature that was created for God to have intimate relations in relationship with. He did not create the animals, the plants, the trees, and the birds uh, so much as to have intimate relationships with them. They were created for man, but man was made exclusively for God to have an intimate relationship with, right? So even when man sinned, right, God came looking for him because, again, his essential nature is love. He cannot but love, right? And so there's no way God would uh, abandon his nature of love. As a matter of fact, uh, his love became more prominent, right? When man fell, uh, the, the angels who worshiped God, perhaps for eons before man was made, uh, never understood this nature of God. When when Satan and uh, uh, his uh, angels rebelled, they never they weren't afforded the opportunity of redemption. Uh, nobody knew this 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 side of God, which is his core attribute. It took man's fall in order to reveal the core nature of God. So God uh, had to respond just out of his nature, right, in order to reclaim, to reunite, right, with, 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 with that which was made in his image. So I want to encourage somebody tonight that it does not matter how far you have fallen, how much you mess up, or how much we go astray. The love of God will ever be searching after us because he cannot but love. God is a lover and he's looking for uh, uh, those who will reciprocate that love. And, uh, you know, we don't preach much from the Song of Solomon, right? It's a, it's a book in your Bible. Uh, but that, that whole image there of, of God as a lover is portrayed uh, in that book. Right, so just it's, it's important to really understand the basic essential nature of who God is, and don't ever allow yourself to fall into this mental trap of condemnation where you think that you can fall so far or be in so deep or mess up so much that God cannot will not come after you or he cannot reach you. The essence of his nature demands that he must reach after you. It's just a matter of will you uh, reciprocate, all right? Uh, next slide, please. It's seeking and bridging reaches its pinnacle when God sends his son into the world to rescue sinners and to provide them with eternal life. John 3, 16, Romans 5, 7 to 8, Ephesians 2, 1 to 5. John declares, this is how we know know what it what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. First All right. John 3, yes, 1 John 3, 16. Thank you. All right. So last time we talked about love as an act of giving the giving of oneself right that's that's what love is it is it is submission right it is the giving of oneself and so the love of god in bridging the gap between fallen humanity and himself was to send uh, 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 the, the, uh, the 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 image of his love right jesus is the, the, the very image of God, right? He is the image of the love of God, right? So Jesus gave his life. He laid down his life in submission to the will of the Father so that the love of the Father can be demonstrated. Again, Jesus laid down his life. He gave up 
himself, right, in submission to the will of the Father, not so much the desire of human beings. It wasn't that we wanted to be saved, really. <laughs> we, 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 we didn't e even understand the need uh, uh, for salvation, right? We were desperately lost. We were hopelessly lost. So it's not as if we were crying out for help, but God seeing our need, realizing the, 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 the condition of humanity that we were in, he uh, 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 demonstrated his love by, through his son, giving himself so that we can be saved. It is important that we understand that as Christians, we have to replicate that, right? We have to demonstrate that. We can't just talk about what Jesus did and then call ourselves Christians. Christians are supposed to be imitators of Christ. So just as how Jesus laid down his life in submission to the will of the Father, a true Christian, a mature Christian, right, will be in some capacity, right, uh, 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 be involved in the giving of themselves, right, according to the will of God, not the desire of men, but according to the will of God, right, uh, 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 we will be giving ourselves, right, uh, for the benefit of others, okay? If we are truly going to be imitators of Christ, we have got to be involved in some type of sacrificial service, right, unto God, submission to God, because remember, he is love, and the love of God is best demonstrated when Christ laid down his life, not for himself. Jesus was already God from heaven. He was not going to be exalted uh, as, as God to any higher position. His humanity, yes, would be exalted, right? But Jesus was fully God and fully man. So it was not for his own personal benefit why Jesus laid down his life. It was for the benefit of others and particularly those who hated him, see? So when, we, when it comes to us being Christians and repl replicating and reproducing this love of God, Remember, first and foremost, we're doing it in submission to the will of God, not because we like somebody, not because they treat us. It doesn't matter how they treat us. God did not offer himself on the cross based upon how uh, on, on, on human response or how they treated him. They treated him bad, right? We know the whole story of uh, what unfolded uh, the, the, during that Passion Week. Right, they treated, but yet he gave himself, he laid down his life, he offered himself. Why? Because he was being submitted to the will of God, and the Father made his will transparent, known unto him. God has made his known, his will known unto us. God deals with us with a certain level of transparency through his word. Right? You have this Holy Ghost. God speaks to us through his spirit, right? Through dreams and visions, God reveals himself to us. So if we know the word of God, if we know the will of God, it is now for us to surrender ourselves and submit our lives, praise God, as Jesus laid down his life. He's not asking us to be nailed to a stake, praise God, with nails driven through, uh, to our hands and feet. Right? Thank God. That's not what he's asking for. But in some capacity, we must be in service and make sacrifice for the sake of others. And that is how the love of God continues to flow. Next slide, please. God's love is not based on the merits of the recipient. Deuteronomy 7, verse 7 to 8. Romans 5, verse 7 to 8. Because he is love, God is not willing that any person should perish but wills that every one repents and live. Ezekiel 18, verse 32, 2 Peter 3, verse 9. So, you know, one of the fallacy that you hear from others, from those outside the church who don't understand, right? They don't believe in a God who will send someone to hell, right? Because they want to somehow paint or portray God as this wrathful or vengeful God, right? Well, the fact is that the very people who will go to hell will go there not because God didn't love them, 
right? But as a result of their inability to reciprocate that love. See, God is and will continue to love. There is no one who will feel more pain and anguish over the lost souls in hell more than God. None of us can ever love our loved ones more than God. He is ever, and as I said, as the sun continues to shine, God's love continues to radiate, right, uh, across the globe, across the universe, okay? But man, because of his own volition and his free will, God is not going to remove that aspect of human nature. Otherwise, man would no longer be in the image of God. If God was to remove our free will, we would become robots, see? So in order for man to retain his individuality and his identity as a... As, as, as a, 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 a as, as a human being who can 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 think and 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 and, and uh, uh, with ration and 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 make choices, right? Uh, uh, God uh, re reserves the humankind the right to make his own decision and to choose. And he tells him, "Listen, I set before you life and death. I set before you good and evil. But I am." begging you to choose life i will love you i love you i want to 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 save you but you have to respond to his love right and it's not based upon any merit of the individual it's not because of our deeds our righteousness our looks our status none of that matters it, it just flows from the essential nature of who God is, right? So the backslider, the sinner, the vilest sinner, the messed up sinner, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what sin you have done. Again, we have a world who wants to paint a God, uh, you know, and, and they, 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 they label the church, you know, with all these uh, uh, slogans of phobia. Uh, God is not anti-individuals, uh, he is anti-sin, see? So God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. See, so when the church preaches, we don't preach against people. We don't say God, God does not hate people. What God hates is the sin. What is really, what hell was created for was to punish sin, not so much mankind. See, hell was not made for mankind. It was made for Satan because Satan who was in heaven and had access to everything that, that, we, that, 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 that we have not experienced uh, 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 chose to reject that. And so hell was created for sin and its chief architect. But it's only been enlarged because of those who by their own will and choice desire to follow in their sinful nature. But God's love is flowing to every creature, to every individual constantly. And while, we're, while they're alive, there is hope for them, right? It has nothing to do with their merit has nothing to do with anything that they do. We cannot earn God's love. We don't do anything to earn. You can't fast enough to earn God's love. You can't pray enough to earn God's love. You can't study the word enough. You can't give enough money to earn God's love. God loves, God's love flows. Even when you are a, 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 a devil worshiper, <laughs> God still loves you. See? Right, so it's important to understand that it is not his will for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. And he is knocking on the door of every heart, right? And he's reaching out as much as he can. Next slide, please. Love the Lord your God. We are totally incapable of loving either God or others, a condition that must be corrected by God before we can love. Beautiful. So again, uh, when it says that we are totally incapable of loving God or others, we're dealing now with the agape love, right? When God, when man sinned, when man sinned, right? Sin came about as uh, man's will, his volition, his choice to not love God back. Remember, we said love is to submit or to accept. God gave Adam instructions. Adam gave Eve the instructions. 
and she determined to rebel against the instructions and Adam followed suit right so that's rebellion it's it's insubordination they did not submit to God's instructions right and so therefore they did not love God in return and they upon upon committing that act because remember the agape love is a power and a force that comes from God it is not derived out of your human ability so when 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 Adam and Eve sinned they were separated from the source of agape love they were able to maintain the human aspects of love the filio the eros the storge love they were able to retain that right but the true love of god the agape love was severed as as long as the relationship was severed so in god reconnecting himself to humanity right it is now giving mankind the ability to love like god loves again uh, you know please take note that the works of the flesh in galatians 5 uh, uh, list them but in james it is summarized as lust of the flesh flesh lust of the eyes and pride of life the word love is nowhere is not used when it comes to what the flesh produces right so it is erotic it is emotional it is carnal it is sensual right the human love okay that is not the love of god and unfortunately today that's how the world wants to judge the church right the, the world judges the church based upon our uh, uh, ability from their perspective to exercise filial love right or storge love and so if we don't exercise what they would consider filial love right loving your neighbor loving your brother and again it's all convoluted because uh they, they try to say well because we preach against certain sins or certain activities or certain lifestyle somehow it is focused on the individual uh when no it's not it is it is directed at the act right but again the world uh, uh views and judges us based upon the human ability to love but what god is looking for from his people is the ability to produce the agape love which cannot be produced outside of god who is the holy ghost see so without the holy ghost you don't have the ability and that is the main reason why you have received the holy ghost you didn't receive the holy ghost to speak in tongues you didn't receive the holy ghost per se primarily right to dream dreams and be and see visions even though joel 2 speaks about that but the primary purpose of receiving the holy ghost is to bear the fruit of love that you are incapable of doing all by yourself so as individuals who are filled with the Holy Ghost, right, uh, if, if you're not walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, right, the Bible says if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill what? The lust. Notice it doesn't use the word love there okay the loss of the flesh so it's always a distinction between love and lust love the de love deals with the 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 the, 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 uh, the a gap in love that the spirit empowers us to do and lust deals with the carnally derived love that comes from our flesh see so if you walk in the spirit you will be able to exercise the agape love the love of god to love your enemies right to forgive right to, to to walk in 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 the peace and the joy and all the different facets and aspects of love that we've covered see right when you walk in the spirit you will be able to accomplish that because you're not walking by your own strength by your own will by your own uh, strength you're walking in the strength of the holy ghost so that's why for those christians who uh, 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 you know you don't pray you don't you don't you don't study your, the bible you don't fellowship with the church you're now retarding your growth and therefore retarding your ability to bear the fruit of love see so we are totally incapable right without god operating in our lives 
Okay, so church is not about you know reading a scripture, saying a prayer, singing three songs, hearing a message, out the call, and we go home back to our 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 old lives. That's not what church is about. All right, it is an opportunity for us to come to hear the word of God together, to glean from the word of God together, to spend time in the presence of God together. Because just as how a baby spends time on its mother's breast, just drinking milk, drinking milk, and guess what? It will grow. So it is. You don't see it. You don't, you don't know that you're growing, but by virtue of giving yourself to spiritual things, automatically you will grow. You will grow in your walk and you will grow in your ability to exercise the love of God, right? Love the Lord your God. Again, when we talk about the law, the problem with the law, Paul says in Romans 7 was, the law was given, but the ability to to, to, to to perform it was not given. And that's what Christ, uh, Jesus Christ came to do. Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to empower you to fulfill what the law prescribed, which is the law of love, right? We talked about it that many times. The Ten Commandments, first four, love to God, last six, love to mankind. The other 603 are expansions of those two, see? So the law uh, uh, centered on love. The end of the law is love. And Jesus Christ came that through his spirit, he would empower us to fulfill that, right? We are incapable of doing it outside of our walk in Christ Jesus, our walk with God. So don't kill yourselves as Christians, praise God, if you're not growing in the spirit, if you're not walking in the spirit, if you're not hungering and thirsting, thirsting after the spirit, how then will you produce the fruit Right? Because God is not coming back so much for your bones. He's not coming back for your body. He's not coming back for your good looks. Right? The body is just a house, a temple, a transport, a conduit for God to work and for God to work through and operate through and live in. See, the body is just a place for him to dwell in. So God is, you know, the body is important and, you know, our bodies will be changed, the Bible says, right? We are going to change from mortal to, immor to immortal. But the body is not the, 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 what, what's, what's essential. What God is looking for in our lives to produce is the fruit of love. If your life is not bearing fruit, then it will be difficult for you to be uh, assessed as truly a child of God. Now again, God is the one who judges and he knows the different levels of maturity. He'll meet you at whatever level you are when he returns, but he knows your desire and he knows you know, what you're longing for. As children of God, we should desire to grow in him, to mature in him. And the way you mature in God is not signs and wonders and miracles, right? Uh, and gifts of the spirit, right? The way you're, you know you're maturing in God is when you're maturing in the facets and the aspects of the fruit of the spirit. Next slide, please. The Bible describing this process of correction are numerous. Circumcision of the heart, Deuteronomy 36. God's writing his law on our hearts, um, Jeremiah 31, 33. God substituting a heart of flesh for a heart of stone, um, being born again by the spirit, removing old clothing and replacing it with new dying to a sinful life and resurrecting to a new one, moving out of darkness into light. Until that happens, we cannot love. All right. So again, remember now, the human without the Holy Spirit has the ability and the capacity to exercise three types of love, right? So a person can demonstrate filial love, storge love, and eros love, and still be far from God, see, and still be lost. So when we we we, we when when we read about these different uh, you know uh, analogies that are used, right, circumcision of the heart, writing His laws on our hearts, we all know that is pointing to 
the Holy Ghost being being poured out, being born again. All of these things is talking about the, 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 the heart of man, which God describes as desperately wicked, even though he has filial love. You can be the most loving person towards your, your children, your grandma, your mother. You can be the most loving person, you know, as a friend, right? Uh, 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 you, you know, you can be the loving, most loving person towards your spouse, right? And yet, still your heart is desperately wicked when it comes to god see because the love of god goes far beyond that right we don't want to settle for just having human love human derived love okay is it does not really reflect the character and the nature of god so all of these uh, 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 written in the Old Testament, uh, speaking of what God would do in the New Testament that we are experiencing was all about changing the heart, right? Changing the heart, all right? It's not just speaking about the murderer and, you know, uh, 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 the thief and, 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 and people who we consider cold-hearted. It is also talking about those who may be loving and kind in, in, as far as in society, but without the Holy Ghost, they don't have a change of heart to truly love like God wants us to love and to imitate him. All right. So until that happens, until the Holy Ghost comes in, right, until the Holy Ghost takes control, because for some of us, the Holy Ghost has entered in, but we have not submitted. We have not given him control. See? So as we said, the reciprocation of love is to, he, God makes him, he reveals himself, make himself transparent, but we must submit. And until we that happens, then we will not have the ability and the capacity to love. We must allow the Holy Ghost to take full control of our hearts. Next slide, please. God alone is the source of love. First John 4, verse 7 to 8. He poured out his love into our, into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Romans 5, verse 5. God's love then awakens a response in those who accept it. God loves through believers who act as channels for his love. They are branches who must abide in the vine if they are to have that love. John 15, verse 1 to 11. We have the assurance that we have passed from death to life because we love others. First John 3, verse 14. I mean, I could spend so much time just on this alone, saints, right? Because the reason why the enemy attacks us in the area of submission is because he knows the more you submit, it is the more the Holy Ghost will flow through your life. See? That's why he attacks us so much in the area of submission, because Satan understands that a submitted life, a submitted heart, right, is the best vessel for God's love to flow through. So if he can keep you questioning authority, questioning leadership, questioning his word, right, uh, trusting in your senses, trusting in your reason, walking by sight, if he can keep you there, then you limit the ability of the Holy Spirit to flow through your life and the love of God to be demonstrated, right? So the person who can understand, and that's, you know, when we talk about true ministers, servants of the gospel, a minister is a servant. The, 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 the only difference between a person who rises to the level of ministry and those who don't is really all about submission. That's really what it boils down to, right? The more you submit, it is the greater you will become. Jesus talked about that. The greatest must be a servant, see? So it's all about submission, folks. If we can overcome this fear and trepidation, you know, and anxiety and, 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 and over, over submitting, right? Because we've been hurt and, you know, we've been taught, don't trust this and don't trust this and don't trust, you know, put your trust in men, don't do this. And, 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 and we've allowed that to cloud our minds so much that we don't realize that God is God and it is he that we are submitting to. 
Praise God, right? And once we can get past that, get past those barriers, those, those walls that we have erected because of past hurts and relationships, once we can get past that, and allow the love of God and allow his spirit to flow through our lives. Here's what he says. You have the assurance that you have passed from death to life, right? We are no longer governed by the old life, the old heart, the old way of loving, right? But we have a new way, a new way of loving. Praise God. Next slide, please. Once we have received God's love as his children, he expects us to love. In fact, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. First John 4 verse 8. Jude urges his readers to keep themselves in God's love. Verse 21. So this is why this is so critical, folks. This is why this is so critical. Because children are supposed to imitate their parents, right? Children carry their parents' genes, their parents' features, their parents' DNA, their parents' blood type, right? And so, you know, Jesus looked at the, the, the Jews at one time and says, you know, you, 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 you're you of their father, the devil, right? He's a liar and the father of it, right? Because they were imitating the characteristics, the attributes of Satan, okay? So it is important that if we're going to indeed be children of God, he says, whosoever does not love does not know God. So here it is, you can find yourself as a child of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, yes, right? But because you're operating solely or primarily from the human carnal love, okay? Uh, 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 John says, guess what? You don't know God. You don't know God. Filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, even operating in the gifts of the Spirit, right but it's all about your clique it's all about your, your you know your, your, your culture you know in, in some in some ways that the church can become very cultish right we can become very cliquish right guess what that is filial love filial is when you love others who share things in in commonality with you the true love of God is demonstrated when you can love across your nationality, across your race, across your culture, right? You don't want to, you don't, you don't, you, you, you're, you're a very immature Christian when you think that everybody has to sing the songs you sing, like the song you sing, eat the food you eat, dress the way you dress, talk the way you talk. That is a very cultish and cliquish and carnal right expression of love see so it's important to dissect that folks and understand what the true love of god looks like because when on the day of pentecost from every nationality from every culture they all came together and we see a reversal of what happened at the tower of babel tower of babel when judgment came they were all scattered and could not understand each other because of the diverse language but we see from all di uh, diverse nationalities, nation, tongues, and languages, they all came together. Praise God. Amen on the day of Pentecost, right? And when we read Revelation about the church that will be in heaven, it will be made up of all different nationalities. So we got to get out of this cultish, cliquish mindset, folks, okay? And understand that the true love of God is demonstrated when we reach across to those who are not like us, to our enemies, praise God, to those who we don't share things in common, right? If you don't love like God loves, right? Because God reached across. We were not like God, but he reached across to us, right? So if you are not able to do that, then your love is very immature and perhaps even carnal, even though you're speaking in tongues, even though you might be even operating in the gifts because the gifts and callings are without repentance. Remember, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name. We did that in your name. And he's going to say what? Depart from me. I never, I couldn't identify with you. I didn't see my love demonstrated in your life. You bore no fruit, saints. Right? So don't just get happy that you've been born again, repent, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, Acts 2.38. And again, we've heard the message all week. Praise God. Thank God for that great preaching at General Conference. Praise God. But it is important for us to look within our lives, right? And uh, uh, work on and pray and ask God to help us to grow in this area of love. Next slide, please. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love of God is a response of the whole 
Love of God is a response of the whole of the believer's heart, soul, mind, and strength. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, Matthew 22, 34 to 40, Mark 12, verse 28 to 34. So the whole of God. Jesus serves as the believer's model. John 14, verse 21, Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8. Obedience to God, Deuteronomy 6, verse 7, Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, and re renunciation of the world system, 1 John 2, verse 16, are critical elements of our love of God. So love to God, saints, and we've covered this, right? It's not uh, uh, emotion plays a role in it, but again, we are seeing so much where for many, that's all it is, right? Their love for God is demonstrated just in emotions. And many people today are judging a church based upon their emotional experience. Well, I didn't feel this or I didn't feel that, right? But that's not, that's not, that's not what love to God is all about, okay? It is the heart, the soul, the mind and strength, the entire individual. That is what the, the, the law says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And so you can love God emotionally, but yet your mind is not totally, totally, totally committed to him. You, your strength is not committed to him, right? Uh, 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 Jesus says uh, uh, where, 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 where your treasure is, that's where your heart is, right? You want to judge a person in, 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 in what they're about? Uh, look at their pocketbook. Look at where they spend their time and their money. That's how you know where someone is committed. So coming to church and singing songs and maybe even dropping a tear or two is not a complete demonstration of the love of God. It is the whole man, the entire being, totally committed to God. 99 and a half, they said, will not do. See? So we don't want to give God 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of our lives and think that somehow that is acceptable. Jesus did not offer a percentage of himself. He offered his entire being for us. And in order for us to reciprocate and love God back the way he wants to be loved, it must be the entire man. Praise God. You don't just love God on Sunday. Praise God. God is not interested in Sunday Christians. He is interested in our people. And again, a lot of folks, you know, question, oh, what, you know, oh, because we go to church on Sunday where we are Sunday worshipers. I'm not a Sunday worshiper. We're not Sunday worshipers. We worship God every single day, every moment of the day. Your entire being must be committed to God. If you're going to wait for a specific day to pray, <laughs> or a specific day to meditate on the word of God. Well, guess what? You're not going to be a successful Christian, right? Your Bible says you must pray without ceasing. That means everywhere you go throughout the entire day, your mind, your soul, your heart, your strength is given. You're listening to God. You're talking to God. You're hearing from God. You're walking with God. You're walking in the spirit so that his spirit can produce fruit out of your lives. Okay, so Jesus is the believer's model. Wherever he went, whatever he did, he says, I do nothing of myself. Okay, so Jesus was always in communication and in contact, praise God, with the Father. And so it is we also must be. Okay, so he, he in obedience to God and again, renunciation of the world system. Why are we so hesitant? Why are we so... Uh, 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 why are we so hesitant when it comes to uh, 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 letting go of the culture of the world? Why is it that as Christians we don't recognize what the world system is and the world culture is? The world culture and world system is not just smoking and drinking alcohol and fornicating. There are many other things that are associated with the world culture, right? And it is because we don't want to submit why we hesitate when it comes to the word plainly says don't do this or don't do that the church plainly says don't do this or don't do that but because of our unwillingness to submit which is what to love truly love right we don't renounce the fashions of the world 
right? The way the world dresses, the way the world acts, the music the world listens to, the places the world goes, all those different things that the world does. It is a culture associated with the lust of the flesh. Lust kills, but love gives life. And we have to move from lust to love. So when we talk about renouncing certain behaviors and attitudes and actions, praise God. When we talk about modesty, when we talk about godliness, sobriety, all these words that are in the New Testament. It's not Old Testament, folks. It's in the New Testament. It is demonstrating our love to God, renouncing the world system. Praise God. They are critical elements in our love. To God. Next slide, please. Our love, however, is easily misdirected. Its object tends to become the creation rather than the creator. It loses sight of the eternal for the temporal. It focuses on the self, often to the exclusion of God and others. We become idolaters, focusing a part or all of our love elsewhere. We are love breakers more than law breakers. Amen. So whenever we begin to operate primarily off of the Eros, the Storge, and the Filio folks, our love is misdirected because all of those love has the yourself as its object. Okay? It has the individual as its object, right? And you lose sight of the eternal because you're focusing more on yourself, okay? So we have to get to that place where we completely die out. Repentance is not a one-day thing. It is not okay. You know, we preach it. Acts 2.30, repent and be baptized. It's not that after you've been baptized, you don't need to repent anymore. Okay, it is daily dying. Paul says, I die daily. So daily, we have to take the focus off of ourselves, folks, right? And try and stop trying to make yourself the focus, right? And let the Christ in you become the focus. We, we, in fasting service today, uh, uh, the scripture was read from, uh, I believe it's 1 Peter 3, praise God, where it talks about the adorning. Right, not with gold and and pearls and costly array, right? Uh, 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 but 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 uh, uh, you know, talking about uh, the meek and quiet spirit, the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price, right? And see, so the women, the holy women of old, adorned themselves, right? They were more focused on eternal things. And not so much on, on themselves. The, the most beautiful that you will ever be as a child of God is when less of yourself is showing and more of God is showing in your life, right? But when we sit down and we, you know, overly uh, 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 want to, you know, uh, uh, dress up the flesh, right? And want to spend time on the flesh, okay? Guess what? It actually makes you more uglier. <laughs> okay it actually does okay because it covers the beauty of the meekness and the sobriety right of the true godly women of god see all right so you become an idolater making yourself the idol making yourself the centerpiece right when we allow those other three human derived love to control our actions and decisions next slide please genesis 22 presents a classic struggle the conflicting conflicting poles of love abraham loves isaac the son of his old age the child of god's promise but god tests his love for the sake of of the love of god abraham is willing to sacrifice the son he loves his response is to a greater love okay see Jesus says you cannot love God and man, mammon. There is no way. Remember, love must encompass the total man, right? The total being. And there's no way you can give yourself totally to two different people, okay? 
a, a, a husband who cheats on his wife or a wife who cheats on her husband, guess what? They love neither one. Okay? What they really love is themselves. Right? Because you can never be completely devoted to two people. See? So even though God knew that Abraham had longed all his life for an heir, okay, this was his heart's desire. And God says, okay, I'm going to give you your heart's desire, but I don't want your heart's desire to share the same position or place in your heart with me. Okay, God tested Abraham. It was a test of love. And folks, remember, we've been teaching you when we taught about faith, that the faith that saves us is not any type of faith. It is the faith of Abraham. So therefore, if God tested Abraham's faith by testing his love, because it says faith works itself in love, right? Faith and love are connected. I hope we are going over these lessons, right? God tests Abraham's faith by testing his allegiance. And if it is the faith of Abraham that saves us, then you better expect for God to test your love. God is going to test each and every one of our faith, folks. And we think, oh, you know, you little trials of the day, and oh, you know, somebody get on your nerves, God is testing me. No, God is going to test you with the thing you love the most. Okay, it could be your spouse, it could be your children, it could be your money, it could be even your very own self, right? God needs to prove, okay, to prove. God knows, but God needs to prove. When he brought Israel through the wilderness, the Bible said he could have brought them another way, through the land of the Philistines. They would have been in the promised land, I think, in a week or two, okay? But God says, I want to bring them this way to prove them okay and as children of god you are going to be tested you're go you have to be proven you got to go through the fire see so god wants to know what place does he occupy in your life and many of us fail the test because we become so attached to family to relationships to our jobs to our careers right to to all these things that are what based on human love story love love of family filio friendly love eros love that is a part of the the, 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 the the romantic relationship well guess what god wants to know if your love for him will supersede all those loves and the sad fact of the matter is many of us we fail that test next slide please jesus describes this conflict as hating father and a mother in order to love and follow God. Luke 14, 26. All right. And we've taught on that. It doesn't mean that you despise your parents. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about preference. He's talking about priority. Okay. We need to prioritize our, our, our objects of love. Okay. We are created to love. And again, there are four different ways that love can be demonstrated according to the greeks right and though we will be tested you have to prioritize prioritize all right agape love the love of god the love for god the love that comes from god must be first place right and then we can now talk about maybe storge love which is love for mother and father and family maybe second to that and then we might talk about filial love which is your love for your friends maybe after that and then finally perhaps because you do need uh to have you know god has made us to be creatures and uh lust is a part of the human uh, uh, uh dynamic right so you have to prioritize they all can't be on a parallel plane folks right we cannot allow our human carnal love to supersede the love of God. So there's a conflict that's always in the heart of every believer. There's a war between the lusts of the flesh, right? And the love of God. Next slide. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love for neighbor is a decision that we make to treat others with respect and concern, to put the interest and safety of our neighbors on a level with our own. All right. 
So love your neighbor as yourself. This is the second part of that love because you can't really say you love God vertically until that love is displayed horizontally. See, many people today say they love God and that really boils down to an emotional experience and yet they have no love for one another. There's no way you truly love God and can't submit to your pastor, folks. Okay? Be understand that. Because God's word says that. God has made himself transparent to us in his will. Ephesians 4, he gave them apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, right? For what? The perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body. God says, I'm going to give you shepherds. So you need a shepherd in your life. There's got to be some human representative that you will submit to as an expression of your love for God. So this whole new modern technology, technology age where, you know, your favorite preacher is the one who's preaching the message that you like to hear on IneedTheWord.com, right? And that's your pastor, the one that's preaching the best message this Sunday. Folks, that is contrary to and will not produce what God wants to produce in your life. It is important that as sheep, we submit, right? Love is submission, right? We got to surrender. And it, it, it is on display in our interactions with each other. Uh, next slide, please. It demands a practical outworking in everyday life, placing a retaining wall around the roof to keep people from falling. Deuteronomy 22, verse 8. Allowing the poor to glean leftovers from the orchards and fields. Leviticus 19, verse 9 to 12. Our actions illustrate our love. Love for neighbor is love in action, doing something specific and tangible for others. Amen. Especially for others who you derive no benefit from. Okay. If you love those who love you, you have not done anything in terms of the agape love. Okay. If you love people who can pay you back, right, then uh, uh, that's, not, that's not agape love, right? Agape love is to go beyond and reach where you don't receive anything in return. See, that is really loving your neighbor. See, love your neighbor is love in action. It's not just a talk, it has to be demonstrated. Next slide, please. John, dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Believers need to share with those in need, whether they whether that need is for food, water, lodging, clothing, healing, or friendship. My, my, my. Again, I could spend so much time here, right? But notice it says love with actions and in truth. That word truth there, right, speaks of sincerity. Guess what? It goes right back to what we said, transparency. Right. When something is is true and sincere. Right. It is transparent. There is no there's no there's, there's there's no falsehood in it. Right. It's not opaque. It, 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 it's transparent. So your love must be genuine. No falsehood. Right. Sharing with the needs of others and not bragging about it. OK. Sharing with the needs of others. And notice. While it mentions material things, there are a lot of folks today who need friendship, right? Calling someone, encouraging someone, right? All of those are actions of love. You may not have food to give or lodging or clothing to give, but oh, how as social beings, we need a kind word, right? A compassionate word, right? A caring word. Those are all actions of love. Next slide, please. The love demonstrated in the parable of the Good Samaritan shows that agape love is not emotional love, but a response to someone who is in need. All right. So James tells us if someone is naked, and you're going to pray for them. Hey, be warmed and be filled. God bless you when you speak in tongues over them. That's not love, folks. Okay? If there is a need to be met, love must be in action. 
God loved mankind from the day he was created. But guess what? Had Christ not come and died on the cross, then all of that love of God would have no meaning. See? Until love is in action, then it has no meaning. Right? So we've got to put legs. we got to put action to our words. Next slide, please. A neighbor is anyone who is in need. Jesus also told his disciples that a neighbor might even be someone who hates them, curses them, or mistreats them. Yet they must love even enemies. Luke 6, 27 to 36, as a witness and a testimony. And this is how you know you have the love of God, folks. All right? To love your friends, Jesus says you're no better than the Pharisees. Okay? While we were enemies, remember that. That is how the love of God was demonstrated to us. And until you can arrive at the place where people who do you wrong and are doing you wrong, you learn to pray for them and you try to reconcile with them and you don't envy or hate them or seek vengeance against them. Until you can reach that place, you are not yet living in the agape love. See? So that's why God even allowed those situations in your life. You're wondering, you know, why people hate me and why I run into this. It is because God is what? Proving. He's what? Developing. He's what? Maturing you in his love. He wants to produce the fruit out of your life. You don't know that you have, you're, 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 you are living in the fruit of love when you just hang around everybody who, who, who agrees with you. Okay? Or you get along with. You need to be around some folks Praise God, who hates your guts. You need to be around some folks who talk against you. And based upon how you respond to them, that's how you're going to know whether or not you're growing in the fruit of love. Next slide, please. The command to love others is based on how God has loved us. Since believers have been the recipients of love, they must love. Since Christ has laid down his life for us, we must be willing to lay down our lives for our brothers. First John chapter 3, verse 16. So the reason we love is because, remember, like the moon, the moon has no light of its own. See? Even though we talk about the light at night, but that's not a light that is derived from the moon. It is only a reflection of the true light. So we are only conduits of God's love. If we have received that love and we are transparent, right? Because if, if, if uh, 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 take for instance, a flashlight, okay? If you know what a flashlight looks like, it has this glass thing on the top of it and then the bulb is beneath the glass. Well, guess what? The light shines through the glass, right? The glass, if, if the bulb is small, but because of how the housing is built, it reflects that light in a greater capacity. See, the, 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 the glass is only a reflector of the light. Now, if that glass was covered, right, then guess what? The light would still shine, but it would not be seen. It would not be seen. So we have to understand that we are not the source, but we are the reflectors of God's light. Of, of God's love, okay? We are recipients, but when we become transparent, his love will flow and shine through our lives. When we hide and pretend and focus on ourselves and we are covetous and envious and unrepentant and unforgiving and we're all consumed with, you know, uh, 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 the, the material things and the carnal things, guess what? We are covering. Jesus talks about the light. You don't light a candle and put it under a bushel. But that's what we're doing. We are covering the light, right? So whatever Christ has done for us in making himself transparent and submitting so that we can benefit, we must reproduce that so that the world let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify not you, but glorify your father. Next slide, please. The Old Testament charge was to love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19, 18. 
But Jesus gave his disciples a new command with a radically different motive. Love each other as I have loved you. John 15, 12. Paul affirms that the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 5, 14. James sees the command to love one another as a royal law. To so again, everything with God is cyclical, all right? The, the earth is round, the, 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 the heavenly bodies are round, the, the earth spins in a circle, it goes around the sun in a circle. Everything with God is cyclical, okay? So people like to harp on the law of Moses. Well, guess what? The law of Moses was not the institution of God's law, all right? God's law preceded the law of Moses. The law that governed Adam and Noah and Abraham was the law of love. That is a heavenly eternal law that existed in heaven. See, it is that law of love that was further expanded within the law of Moses, right? And rituals were created for the people to understand the, 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 the shadow or type of what was to come. Jesus Christ came to fulfill that. Right. And now what we are living out today is that same royal law of love that existed from eternity. Right. So even though Jesus said it's a new command, it's really an old command. It's only new because the people he was speaking to, the Jews, they were only basing their relationship with God on the Mosaic law. But this has been the law from the beginning, folks right the law of love that's where it started and because god is cyclical that's where it ends everything starts and ends with love last slide love is the motivation for evangelism christ loves compel us to become ambassadors for christ which a minister of reconciliation all right so, Corinthians five fourteen. thank you all right so uh we can give food we can give clothes we can give uh, uh all the material goods folks right remember love meets the needs of others that's how love is demonstrated and great we we, we should we should be charitable in terms of material things but the greatest need of humanity, folks, is for their soul to be saved. And there is absolutely no way that one can be living in the love of God and walking by the fruit of the Spirit, right, and not have compassion and a desire to reach the lost, okay? So for anybody who says that we are children of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, walking in the Spirit, and we don't have a burden for souls, well, we need to pray. We need to ask God to give us that burden because that is why Jesus lived. That's why Paul lived. That's why Peter lived. They gave their lives for the saving of soul. So true love, right? Remember, he came to seek and to save. He's still seeking. He still wants people to be saved. He's not seeking through a human body. He lived for for 30 years right and 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 uh, for, for he lived uh, and he died right and he's gone in that body but now his spirit dwells in the church and through us he still wants to seek he still wants to save okay so the the, the culmination of the love of god in our lives the fruit, the evidence that we are truly living by the love of God, we will try to spread the good news of the gospel and tell others about the saving of their souls. In Jesus' name, praise God. I know we went a little bit long tonight, but I wanted to really hammer this point home for us to understand the true love of God the true love of God. I pray that we uh, were edified. I pray that uh, we can glean something from this, that we will uh, have some direction in terms of when we pray, what we should pray about, 
when we when we think about uh, our activities uh how they should be directed okay it is to produce the fruit of love out of our lives we're going to continue on this topic god bless you for those who may be new to our channel hit that subscribe button share it with someone who you think might benefit from it uh let's have some dialogue and interaction uh god bless you until next time